going to talk about creating hands. And the reason I want to talk about this is because hands are something that people notice right away when they see the human form in art. It's usually the face and then the hands that people see right away, you know, when they first see that piece. It's just something that, you know, kind of, you just notice it when there's something off and you really notice it when they're done well. So I'm gonna give you three rules on creating good quality hands so that people will appreciate them in your next piece. And it doesn't matter if you're a painter or you're a uh, sculptor or you just wanna create a simple sketch. These three rules will help you to understand the form and the techniques in creating good hands. So here when I'm drawing this hand, the fingers kind of look like noodles, if you want to call them that. That's because this is a cartoon hand. It gets the job done, but it's nothing to be proud of. So we want something that will really stand out. And we do this by following lines in hands. These lines are important because it's the joints in a hand that really make it stand out. And that's why it's different from all the other parts of the body. Because a hand is just a really bony thing. You know, it's not soft or curved with soft edges. It's, it's very defined. That's probably the best way I can describe it right now. So this brings us to rule number one, which is using lines to follow the bone structure in a hand. Here you see me sketching the hand and I'm using straight lines for every single part of every single finger. And there may be a few spots where the lines are a little bit curved, but for the most part they're all very straight and they really give the hand that definition. You also want to draw the different parts of the fingers as in the different bones within the finger in separate segments and you want those segments defined in a bold manner and here you see me doing that with the straight edge here and then I go back in and I draw in those creases in the skin where each finger bone would bend. A little bit later in the video I'm going to sculpt a hand out of clay and that will help you understand this a little bit more when it comes to segmenting the different joints and bones in a finger when you're drawing or sculpting your hand. Following the bone structure will also give the hand a very natural look so it will be in a pose that the hand would rest in or convey a certain emotion. And that will bring us to our next rule here in a little bit. First I want to talk about knuckles and drawing the knuckles in a hand. You really want to bring those out because the knuckles are where the fingers start and when people view a hand from a distance they can really see that. And you also want to define those little joints on the tops of the fingers. So that's why I'm starting out with circles here. Then I'm simply connecting those circles with the lines. And that's why this all falls under the rule number one, which is using a linear structure in order to follow the uh, bone anatomy, or skeletal structure, I should say, in a hand. And this will really make your hands look accurate without you needing to be an expert or well-experienced artist in creating hands. You know, it just kind of comes together really naturally and easy for you. This trick here of roughing out the joints in pencil and then going back over with pen is a really handy trick for you if you want to just do a quick hand and you don't want to be, you know, going back and trying to correct it over and over. You know, your hands don't really need to be perfect 100%. They just need to look good. And here I'm going to draw a uh, clenched fist quick for you because I think that will really show how much the knuckles stand out when you're looking at a hand from a certain angle. Here we're using something called foreshortening. So you're looking at the object from front on and you don't really see the back of the object. 
but it gives you a good view of what I'm explaining right here. Interpreting that clenched grip brings us to our next rule. The statue of David is one of the most famous sculptures in the world, done by Michelangelo. The statue has an enlarged hand, and this is because it represents the power of God, and this is something that Michelangelo wanted to convey in this sculpture. And this brings us to our next rule, which is knowing what emotion you want your hand to convey. I'm going to start off explaining this rule by drawing a female hand next to the more masculine hand that I just previously drew. The difference between these two hands is that the female hand is more narrow and it's softer in appearance. This doesn't necessarily have to be something about gender really, it's just, you know, maybe ma masculine versus feminine and what kind of hand that is represents what kind of person you want to uh, describe in your art. And this is where you can really bring out those rough details like the defined knuckles and joints and the veins. Or you can leave the hand a little bit more soft and elegant looking. Either way though, be sure you still follow that first rule of using lines because we still want to avoid having a uh, cartoon hand as a product of what we are drawing or sculpting here. This is just the basic form of the hands right here, but if you spend more time on them and add more detail, um, you can definitely get them looking very realistic. Here's a few other examples. Just you know a different angle of looking at hands so now we are going to move on to the third and final rule and this rule I am going to demonstrate using a little bit of clay so I can uh, make a small hand for you and kind of rough it out and the reason I'm gonna rough out this little hand out of clay for you is because the third rule is using flat surfaces or different planes when making a hand and this is especially important when you're sculpting a little bit more so than drawing or painting hands you can see I start by following the first two rules which are um, going with the straight lines and knuckles and joints and then deciding what kind of hand I want to make here. So I'm obviously going with a more masculine, thicker hand. And you'll see that I'm just carving the different dips between the fingers. So I'm just kind of giving the impression of separate fingers right now. And you know, the hand, if you're gonna carve, it's obviously gonna start out a lot more heavy in volume than when you're finished so it's something where you kind of just have to keep working at it a little bit a lot of artists really make the mistake of not giving their hands any life and that's where these different surfaces sort of come into play because they really add that dimension to the hand you see i flipped it over and the bottom's still flat but after a little bit of carving we start to shape up that uh, palm and then the different fingers on the hand and I'm looking at my own hand the whole time through this video when I'm making these so I'm just kind of going off that and you know when you're making this obviously you want good reference so I would suggest adding some photos or even having a model you know stand in front of you and hold their hands up but there's different ways to do that now this third step is really kind of difficult to explain, so I may do another video on it in the future to kind of build on it a little bit. You've probably noticed that the thumb is still missing. The reason I'm adding it on separately is because thumbs sort of hang down from the bottom of the palm of the human hand. You want to imagine a hand holding a circular object. That's how a hand uh, sits naturally. And it's kind of hard to get it that way when you're carving because you see here I got on a flat surface and I'm trying to work it around without smashing it. So that's just something you want to be really careful with. 
here you see the final touches to the hand and I'm just carving out little dips between the finger bones and the bones on the top of the hands palm and then I go around the edges and kind of flatten out certain spots and this is where those surfaces come into play so here's a final piece and that's where I bend the fingers around and that really makes the hand come alive these rules are just something that I've sort of come up with in my own time creating art. I didn't really read them in a book or anything. And the last thing I will say is you need to add a little bit more detail and spend a little bit more time if you want that ultra-realistic look. Well, I hope these tips helped you a little bit. And don't be discouraged if they don't turn out perfect right away. Give it a little bit of time and practice for a while. And, you know, maybe draw some hands and then sculpt some or use different hardnesses of clay or even use wax. In this piece I used wax to carve the hands, you know, for one reason they're they're uh, very small and you know the other thing is when you carve you're just going in at those different planes, those flat sort of planes on each side you know, one at a time, so you can really see your hands shape up. But I assure you, if you stick at it for a while, it will pay off and people will truly appreciate your hands in your work. But thanks for watching today, and we'll see you next week.